disorganizing everyone. Uh, got some notes. And we're going to be talking about building your immune system, how to build natural immunity. It's a very important topic, especially in today's world. And um, so we're just waiting for Andrea to come back. Um, and there she is. Andrea, can you hear me all right? Andrea. Hi, I can hear you better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, uh, you weren't, you didn't get good reception when you dialed in before. Oh, okay. So, well, we're live on Facebook already. We're already streaming and I know it's a few minutes early. Well, let's get this thing going. You know, Andrea, in today's world, immunity is a hot topic. Well, it should be anyway, right? Should be all the time, right? Yep. I was, uh, I was looking on uh, Harvard's website this morning, uh, and and they had they had an article on building um, immunity, natural immunity. Mm -hmm. And you know, like last week, we were talking about men's health, and we were discussing why you know it's kind of a subject that doesn't get brought up as much as as women's health, and a lot of it is because women really choose the provider; they choose the you know, clinics, things like that, right? In the family. Mm -hmm. So, yep. and then I think that women tend to take better care of themselves also, you know, as far as their health. Um, and maybe that's why women on average live to be 10 years longer than, than men. Yep, plus we're stronger. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> plus you're Not stronger. Physically. Not physically. Actually, um, actually, you know, I don't know if I'm going to totally agree with you because women tend to have a lot of autoimmune conditions. Do you know why? Toxins. No. Mm -hmm. mm, no. No. Women tend to have more autoimmune conditions because um, in your body, uh, there's a certain, there's a, um, you, you, when you get pregnant, there's something inside your body that has different DNA than you do. Yeah, our babies. Yeah, different DNA. And so your immune system has to be able to recognize baby mom, baby mom. And, uh, and so your immune system, um, that triggers autoimmune diseases later on. Did you know that? Proven. Fact. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. So women tend to have more autoimmune problems, but men tend to have more uh, problems with... Uh, you know, just not taking care of themselves, not eating right, not not watching over what's there going on, you know, with their life. Right. When women tend to go in, like they might notice a bump or bruise or whatever, and they go, oh, this isn't normal. And they they <clears throat> whether they examine it themselves and just go, hey, I'm gonna I'm figure out what's going on, or they go to the doctor, they tend to they tend to um, be more aware of what's going on. Where men, you know, most men, most of us, you know. We'll go to the doctor when we're dying. Yes, <laughs> that's true. You know, oh, I, I can't, I can't, you know, I, I, I can't get up, you know, I can't move, I can't walk, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, I got to go to the hospital. Right, that's it. We went to the beach at Lake Michigan yesterday and my daughter walked up to the car and there was an older couple sitting there on a bench and she just politely said, hey, how are you doing today? And this guy goes into all his conditions that he has, you know, and it's like, sorry, you didn't take care of yourself, you know, and, and yeah. she offered to pray for it for him. And he says, oh, no, I don't believe in that. And she's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Isn't At this that crazy? point, okay, can't do anything for you. Can't do anything. Yeah. You know, and, and isn't that the truth? I mean, if people don't want to take care of themselves, you can't want better help for them if they don't want better health for themselves. Right. I was just reading on the Harvard website, you know, going back to that, you know, if, if, if Harvard Medical is covering it, it has to be important, right? I mean, as a subject, I'm not gonna to totally agree with everything that they say, but I'm just gonna say, you know, as a subject matter, it's, it's important. Mm-hmm. If they're covering it. So, you know, they say, they say that, 
you know, the built-in immune system has to be strong. And they say that that 70% of our immune system, I'm reading my notes here, um, is in the gut, yep. the digestive system. And, and so they go right into uh, talking about, you know, the uh, uh, microorganisms that, that build your gut, you know, the probiotics. Mm -hmm. So, so they say that there's, there's 10 times more um, microorganism cells, right? So bacteria, um, funguses, um, uh, healthy yeast and things like that, that live inside of you. There's 10 times more things living inside you that aren't you than there are human cells in your body. 10 times yep. more. Yep, I heard that. Yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was really interesting. Um, they say that I'm just, I'm just kind of looking at my notes, jumping around here a little bit. They say that, um, you know, as you age, why, why do we see that, that people tend to have, um, you know, more problems with, with their immunity as they age. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you and I have covered that, um, topic and, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, a lot of it has to do with immune senescence. Immune senescence. Okay. Yeah. Which so basically, your immune cells are in senescence? They're going into senescence. Exactly. Right. So your immune system is getting weaker because your, your cells, the, the cells that, that fight the infections are going into senescence, which means they're going into old age. I mean, there's no, there's no simple way of saying it. Your immune system is going into old age. Okay. And the cell, the, the immune cells are retiring and, and now you don't have enough to fight off the infection. And so, so infections, when you lump them all together, um, according to the website that I was reading, they were saying that it's the leading cause of disease for people over the age of 65. You got to add that qualifier over the age of 65. So it's not the leading cause of, of death in, in the Western world. That's heart disease. But the leading cause of, of death for people over the age of 65. What was that? Infections? Infection. That's interesting. I'm doing a deep dive in parasites right now. Yeah. There's a yeah. pretty um, knowledgeable doctor out there. I don't even know if she's still alive. But she says that most disease comes from parasites and toxins. Yeah, I, I'd, say, I'd say that. I'd agree with that. I don't know. I mean, what you consider parasites, but, you know, like, um, I mean, if it's, but, but, but toxins, toxicity, yeah. So, folks, if you just joined us, I know it's just over the top of the hour here. We got started a little bit early. Um, and we're talking about natural immunity, natural immunity, how to build your immune system. So there's this, this innate, I-N-N-A-T-E, innate immune system in your body, mm -hmm. which means that it's built in and it's, um, it's designed to... Um, fight off things that um, it were, were, were uh, given to you, maybe through your mom's immunity or whatever. But there's another part of your immune system called the adaptive immune system. Adaptive. It adapts to things. Yeah. So like what's going on in the world right now, if, if, mm -hmm. you, get, if you get um, exposed to this virus, and you don't necessarily get sick because people think that they're sick when they have symptoms, but they don't necessarily get sick. They say that over 50% of people never even know they got, that they got exposed to, to this virus. But what happens is, is that your immune system, they're showing, builds immune fighting cells that fight this off. And that's the adaptive immune system. Okay. And then... As new variants come into, into, into play, you know, new variants of the disease, your immune system adapts again. It changes the antibody 
just a little bit to tweak it out to go after the new variant. Yep, it does that if you don't mess it up. If you don't mess it up. So I just thought, I just thought that that was kind of interesting. The other thing that they say is that as you age, um, you have atrophy of the thymus gland. And that decreases your immune system as well because it decreases these T cells. Okay. These T cells, which are part of your immune system. So interesting, interesting stuff, right? Yeah. Again, folks, if you just joined us, um, I'm discussing some stuff that I read on Harvard's website, Harvard Medical. So, you know, as, as, I, as I discuss that, you know, I don't always agree with what Harvard has to say. I don't agree with all medical research. I don't agree with, with um, you know, because there's just some conflicting things. So, so really, we have, to, we have to make our own decision on, on what we want to do as far as, as, far as our, our uh, health goes, right? I mean, if mm -hmm. you choose to go well, the medical like, route, yeah. yeah, if you choose to go the medical route, that's up to you. If you choose to go the natural route and build your own immune system, that's up to you. You know, um, you have to accept the responsibility for which way you go on that. But, you know, I really believe that if you can get your immune system to be, to build the immunity, it's going to be stronger. It's going to be longer lasting. It's going to, it's going to build that innate adaptive immunity that your body was designed to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you go way back, if you go way back to, uh, to caveman days, let's go back to, to ancient man, ancient man, you know, um, do you know what the number one, when they, when they exhume the, the bodies and they're able to tell um, based on, you know, genetic uh, information, do you know what was the number one killer of people back in ancient times? Dinosaurs? Oh, you believe it was dinosaurs? I don't know. You really think a big old T-Rex would come over and snap you up and, and eat you? That was the number one killer. Didn't you see Jurassic Park? You're crazy. You know, you know what the number, <laughs> you know, number one killer back in ancient times was? Tell me. It was an invisible killer. It was called infection. I would see. Infection? I would see. Yeah. Yeah. It was called infection. It was bacteria. Bacteria. And they say one of the greatest things that, that was, you know, that was invented for modern medicine was penicillin, antibiotics. But the problem with it was, is that we overused it. Right. We, we started using it for everything. And what happened was, is that the bacteria adapted to it they adapt just like our immune system adapt they adapted to it and now we have all this penicillin and antibiotic resistant bacteria out there yep there's some bacteria that we don't that we have no clue how to kill it there's there's actually sanitariums across the country across the world across the globe that have people in it that are have these infections and they're trying to just isolate them so that these bacteria don't get out into the general population and i'm not saying i'm not saying it to scare anybody i'm just saying that hey this exists it's real andrea real yep that's what so, the medical community does when they don't have a solution what's fear no i tell you they can't do anything about it and put you in an institution well yeah and and so so the answer to it the answer to it is that you know as we, uh, if, if you read a book called The Coming Plague, you know, it's, it, this was written 20 years ago or whatever, but um, in that book, the author says that, um, that the, the future of man, humans, um, is, is really going to be uh, uh, um, at risk. We're going to be at risk because of little microorganisms, bacteria and viruses. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it right now. Um, India right now, they've, they've isolated a virus uh, much more deadly than, than the coronavirus. My son went down to um, Africa, to Sierra Leone, and he studied Ebola and other hemorrhagic uh, um, infections, diseases. 
mm-hmm. and much more worse than what we have going on right now. Horrible stuff, Andrea. So what are we going to do to fix our immune system or keep it well, strong? Yeah, we have to keep the immune system strong. So number one, then, since since 70% of your immune system is in your gut, wouldn't it make sense to do the things that build the gut? Mm-hmm. Right? And so probiotics, probiotics, your um, lactobacillus and acidophilus and things like that. You know, I remember when I graduated from chiropractic college, that was it. Acidophilus, lactobacillus. That's what we had. You know, that right. was our, that was our probiotics. And, uh, and then, you know, they, we, we've got people taking at it and it, it helps, it helps. But the problem with it is, is that there's, you know, there's like 30,000 strains of uh, different forms of this bacteria, this healthy bacteria that live in your gut. And you're telling me that you're going to take two and you're going to fix it. Right. No, it doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. So you have to, you have to have, you know, a probiotic that's got all sorts of a variety of different strains so that it inoculates your system with, with all these healthy uh, um, probiotics and, and uh and to build your system up you know a and good one i know of a good one i take uh sizzles balance d right and i think a lot of people see balance d and they get confused they don't realize that it's a probiotic they think it's a vitamin d supplement it's not a vitamin d supplement there isn't enough vitamin d in it to make it a vitamin d supplement there's a little right. bit but because we do need vitamin D for the digestive system, but there's not enough to call it a vitamin D supplement. But the problem with a probiotic, Andrea, is, is that, you know, these probiotics, they, they, they also, there's two things that I would say that's a problem with most probiotics is that they don't identify the, the prebiotic factor that needs to go along with it. And prebiotics would be like your chicory root and things like that. Fiber, because the, the good bacteria live on the prebiotics. So you need probiotics and you need prebiotics at the same time. Mm-hmm. That's not good enough either. Because again, you can only put so many strains. They've only isolated so many strains of bacteria to put in a probiotic. So even the, the best probiotic on the market gives you maybe a dozen different strains of, of Uh, good bacteria and you can have billions of colonies like we have with ours but the problem with it is is that um how do you how you got to have that variety of of strains to actually have a good strong gut and a good strong gut lining which means a good strong immune system and that's Mm -hmm. where we need fulvic acid right right that compost oh why aren't you gonna say it's from dinosaurs again it's from dinosaur poop yeah you like it when I say that, don't you? No, I just think it's funny <laughs> because it's actually not. It's from decomposed uh, seaweed. Oh, yeah. I've heard that some companies get it out of like bags about 60 feet deep in the ground. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they, go, they go dig up. Um, but it's in the ancient soil, like right here in the Red River Valley where I live. You know, there used to be an ancient lake called Lake Agassiz. And you know, they found, um, they found, uh, a shark teeth. Yeah. They found shark teeth, um, in the, in the shores of the river here of the, because, because there used to be ancient sharks swimming around, like right here where I'm sitting right here, where you're seeing me today, this used to be a lake bottom. Interesting. Yep. Millions of years ago, I would be underwater right now. Mm-hmm. and i don't swim so it's you'd not be a mermaid a you'd be a mermaid swim. no you I'd don't be, swim what do you mean you I, don't swim i swim like a rock <laughs> you're kidding no i i'm um when i was learning how to scuba dive you know i never i never could figure out why i couldn't swim why i i just had a hard time swimming i mean and, and i i hated going swimming <laughs> um but I was taking scuba diving lessons back uh, a number of years ago. And, uh, and the scuba diving instructor, he's, he said that I'm part of that group of people that they say that 5% of people um, don't float. 
Really? I don't have any. I have zero buoyancy. I've never heard of that. Yeah, that's a small group of people that have zero buoyancy. So if I was with you at Lake Michigan right now, and I, I went walking out into the lake, I could just keep walking down into the lake. <laughs> just keep walking, keep on walking all the way I down. I can't imagine. Yep, I go into a swimming pool. I start at the shallow end and I go to the deep end and I just keep walking right down to the bottom. <laughs> you must have, what do they have, like more dense body? Density, yeah, I'm dense. I don't know dense? if that's a good thing. I'm dead. So <laughs> anyhow, you know, uh, Andrea, that's, uh, that's what they're saying there. Um, zinc. Zinc is important for building natural immunity. They find that um, it, uh, it helps with um, immune cell development, but also with communication between the immune cells. Um, zinc is important. Okay. And uh, um, so suck on one of those uh, galvanized nails yeah i have a whole pail of them oh pail and shingle nails right and mm -hmm. uh, and that helps out with inflammation you know but you could you could use galvanized metal and you could actually suck on it and get enough off of that but it's easier to have a vitamin have your multivitamin have some zinc in it vitamin c vitamin c very is very important, important. you know very they talk they talk about they talk about vitamin C. Um, so zinc, what was I reading? Twenty milligrams a day. So it's not very much. Mm -hmm. you know, that's like the speck of a of a you know pinhead. Vitamin C, you need a little bit more. You know, I'm I'm I've heard from some people three thousand to five thousand milligrams a day. Um, but the problem with that is that if you take that as a supplement, vitamin yeah. C. Vitamin C will give you the runs and you'll be running for the bathroom. And uh, because of the vitamin C, if you take, if you take a, a normal vitamin C supplement. So, um, you know, there's different ways of taking vitamin C. I have a friend who uh, got vitamin C infusions when he got, when he got this COVID and uh, they gave him vitamin C infusions. Vitamin D3, you keep fading in and out, Andrea. You must um, be getting phone. I didn't have any electricity in the socket. Didn't have electricity. I guess I had to replug it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so vitamin C is good. It 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 supports the it supports both of those immune systems that we were talking about, the innate and the adaptive. Vitamin C helps both of them. And then you have vitamin D three. They've shown that vitamin D three um, lowers your risk of of respiratory infections vitamin d3 lower this is this is from the harvard website you know so there's there why aren't they then why aren't they telling people this andrea why aren't they saying hey 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 well, that's a very good question doc that's the good question of the day because right now i mean that's that's the major problem is that people get this infection it it attaches to the to the cells in the in the lungs and they have problems. So vitamin D3, um, you know, and, and, and I'm reading, you know, on, online, they're saying a thousand international units, 2000 international. I actually take more than that. You know, uh, during the summer, I take 5,000 and in the winter, I take 10,000. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that, hey, even going outside, you know, you're supposed to have 20 per, or 20 minutes of whole body exposure, whole body exposure. But, you know, um, you know, who gets that? Well, the thing is too, you gotta make like, you know, last winter I started taking 10,000 units a day and then I later found out I wasn't assimilating any of it. I actually went and got a blood test and my vitamin D level was way down, even though like I'd what? been taking, mine was what like was 30 minutes. 30, what, 30 oh 39 39 yeah. yeah no wonder you got infected with COVID yeah and I got it really bad but um so I tried two different vitamin D supplements and took 10,000 units a day and I that I got tested after months of doing that so there's got to be more to it than just taking popping a vitamin D yep yeah, so you have to you have to get the activated form, which is D three, which I know you were doing, mm -hmm. and then 
but then you know magnesium and and other factors that play along with it they all work together everything works together not just mm-hmm. one thing you can't just take one thing and go oh i i fixed everything you know and it's i remember the same you- communication to the cells to open them up to let the is it the vitamin d or c in to the cell or something like that it's like the yeah. the gate yep and then vitamin the b vitamins the b vitamins also and we've got a vitamin b12 um uh, deficiency epidemic going on in 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 I think you know the Western world. I don't think it's just the United States, but right. vitamin B12. And you know what was funny was a couple of years ago, um, my buddy um, in Montana he's passed away now, but he had a disease where his his body didn't make enough um, vitamin B12 because you your gut it's made in the gut, and um, and um, um, so he needed to get injections and, um, they, they stopped the, uh, they stopped the, uh, um, the production of it in a lot of places. So that was kind of funny when we know that there's a problem with it. Elderberry, you and I have talked about elderberry. Elderberry is high in vitamin A, B, C, and E, which are all important for the immune system. And it's been shown to help out with, uh, decreasing a cytokine storm. Uh, echinacea, you refer to echinacea. Uh, they, they show here, it, it decreases your risk. If you take echinacea, it decreases your risk of getting things like the common cold by 58%. I mean, they actually got a number, you know, and <clears throat> so obviously they've done studies. Let's say it's not 58%. Let's say it's only 40%. It's still something worth taking because if it decreases that you know that risk but they're saying 58 percent, and it decreases duration of when you get sick um the common cold by by uh, reducing it by 1.5 days right mm-hmm. Go- golden seal golden seal is an herb and it contains something called berberine remember you and i talked about berberine mm-hmm Right? Do you remember what it was? What berberine? Mm-hmm. What I what we were talking about for? We were discussing yeah. a berberine when uh, when we were talking about diabetes, blood sugar. Okay. Yeah, berberine uh, helps to control your your uh, A one C and things like that. Um, but they also found that it's a really strong antimicrobial and anti inflammatory. Um, so. And then uh, uh, Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, there's a lot of different things in Chinese medicine. One of them is called astragalus. Uh-huh. And, and we know astragalus because of our product for anti-aging, but they're mm-hmm. saying that it, it also helps with the, um, with the improving yeah, the immune system because it contains something called a, a sapuin a sapuin and i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but um then they find that there's that there's flavonoids lots of flavonoids in in uh stragulus that help um and antioxidants and polysaccharides which um again are antiviral and antimicrobial anti-inflammatory and then astragalus is also an adaptogen and we've talked about adaptogens um when we talk about ashwagandha uh-huh right and yep. do you remember do you remember what it, uh, uh, adaptogens do oh uh, uh, wow uh, ashwagandha ashwagandha they adapt i figured that's what you'd say so what they do <laughs> is they help to balance out your uh, adrenal gland so that you handle stress better so so all um, adaptive all adaptogens balance out the adrenal gland boom yeah so um, I'm just kind of whipping through some of the some of the things that I took notes on here, um, but there's also a lot of a lot of different studies and 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 I'm looking at the time things like that. So they talk about this uh, micronutrient malnutrition again. Getting back to um, why do we see older people, elderly, having immune system problems? Why is infection basically the number one killer? of people over the age of 65. Well, they say it's not just because the immune senescence and it's not just because of atrophy of the thymus gland, but they they also say it's because of micronutrient malnutrition. 
micronutrient. So there should be some tiny traces of essential things you need. Yeah. So what they list here, I actually made a list because I figured you'd be asking, which ones are they, Kurt? They are. I am. And zinc, selenium, uh, iron, copper, folic acid, vitamin A, B6, C, and E. Okay. Are some of them that, um, that, 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 that there's a micro, micronutrient malnutrition. And why would the elderly have problems with this? Well, because their gut isn't absorbing it. So even if they have a good diet, they still, not, might, they still might have a deficiency because they're not absorbing it. But it could also be that they're just not getting it in their diet. Because older people, they, they kind of lose that, that uh, taste. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and so they don't eat as well. Yep. And they yeah. lose their the smell because they don't get enough zinc. Right. So then they don't smell their food and it's not appetizing. Yeah. And then on top of it, you know, I think that a lot of older folks go into depression and, you know, and a lot of people, you know, I mean, when I get depressed, I eat more, but some people, they get depressed and they eat less. I eat more, but, um, you know, well, so I what's think older, older people typically eat a lot less anyway. Yeah. Well, they have a lot, of, a lot less um, expenditure for energy, you know, so then they just, you know, and then they're, they're not hanging around with their family as much, so they quit eating as much, things like that. So the answer to that really, Andrea, is super nutrients, supplements. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, you have, and, and you don't want to wait till you have a deficiency. You don't want to wait till your vitamin D levels are at 37% or in 37, mm -hmm. you know, uh, milligrams per deciliter or whatever it is and 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 going oh now what right? right i mean in some cases that's that's a bad thing and uh and so what you want to do is you want to you want to um identify that right now and just say hey look you know i'm going to start going after this right now i'm going to start trying to figure out what can i do to prevent this from happening mm -hmm. and you start taking different things so the next thing they talk about is stress they say that stress um that stress decreases the immune system de decreases the immunity okay i agree with that i had three kids you have kids <clears throat> you have grandkids when you when you go back and you look you know if the kids were um had like it was finals week in school they tended to have more problems with colds and things like that around the week of the finals week because their, their stress levels went up, immune system went down like that, kind of an inverse relationship like that. Um, temperature extremes. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember when your mom used to tell you that, that oh, it's, it's getting cold out. You don't want to get a cold. You don't want to catch a cold, right? Caused by the coronavirus, by the way, and a different coronavirus. And but why would, why would cold, you know, cold weather outside, why would that lead to having decreased immunity? Never made sense to me. It didn't make sense to me either because, you know, you'd think that you'd actually have better immunity when it, when it gets to be cold outside because the cold kills the bacteria and the viruses. Okay. Well, why were they telling us on the news that the summer heat will kill the virus? They, they did say that, didn't they? But, yeah. you know, but, but guess what we did? It gets hot out, we turn the air conditioner on, recirculating the air. So I cough over here, you're in another part of the house, it circulates that, you breathe in what I just coughed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? and I just saw a doctor say, you know, like, if you have it, you, you know, you, if you're a family member, you isolate and you stay away, but you open the windows as long as you can. I mean, in Fargo in January, you're not going to open the windows, but no, fresh no. air is the best. Yep. Yeah. Um, so fresh air is the best. So that's why that kind of, it kind of threw me. It's like, okay, summer, everybody's outside doing stuff. Um, we mm -hmm. should have less infections. And that's, that was kind of the whole theory 
But the problem with it is, is then it gets extremely hot. And now they're breathing in the air conditioned air. Wintertime, you're breathing in the heated air. And uh, so you're circulating all these different things, you know. So uh, temperature extremes can, can cause stress to the body and it can cause problems. Plus, you know, you're, you're getting all those funguses and stuff like that that grow in the recirculated air as well. Exercise, lack of exercise um, causes the immune system to weaken up. So we need to get mm -hmm. exercise, get outside, you know, especially right now for you living over in Michigan, me up here in North Dakota, hey, a couple months there, I mean, it could be cold out, there could be, you know, snow flying um at least here uh fluids drinking drinking lots of fluids you know they say that a lot of us are dehydrated you drink half your body weight in ounces per day yeah and I, but i remember i remember you know um i remember not that long ago i uh I didn't drink that much water. I just I you know for some reason I didn't like the taste of water and and so I just cut back now I find myself since I've been doing this weight loss, you know, I drink a lot of water. I drink a lot more fluids and um, I like, to, I like to drink the water now. It tastes good. Um, so it's, it's different. It's like my taste developed for it. Um, sleep, lack of sleep can cause problems with your immune let's, system. Let's hold on now. I, don't, I just want to tell people, I hear so many people say I don't like to drink water. You're tipping yours, but I have a straw and you guys have seen me on here with a straw for like at least four years because that's what I've been doing for about four years. I hate drinking out of a cup. I hate drinking water out of a cup. And it wasn't because I've been doing this four years. I just didn't like it before. Yeah. And that's what I hear from so many people. I don't like drinking water. Well, try a hard straw with a, a good cup, like one that's PBA free or like a Yeti cup or something. You yeah, know, but when well, you know those hard straws, what do you get to do with them when you eat? Because you can't clean them. Well, you get a tiny brush, you get a straw brush and clean them. A straw brush. Yeah, they have them. <laughs> a straw brush. <laughs> you don't know and, everything, Doc. <laughs> and Andrea, Andrea, Andrea. You know what? I'm here's my comment about straws. You suck. The straws suck. I don't suck. <laughs> But get your sleep. Okay. We had moved on to sleep. Getting sleep. Okay. And you know, so you need to get you need to get adequate sleep because that's when your body does most of its healing is during the is during the, the resting time and things like that. That's why when you get sick, you get tired. When you get nutrient deficient, you get tired. When you have something wrong, when you fall down, break your back, you're tired a lot because that's when your body does most of its healing because that part of the immune system or the nervous system, the parasympathetic kicks in and it says, let's fix this thing up, repair. Yep. It's just like you. flowers, flowers bloom at night. You wake up in the morning, they're all bloomed. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, boom, they're blooming. There they yeah. are. Garlic. That was one thing that I, I, I was surprised that they mentioned garlic on the website. Yeah, me too. Yeah, garlic, because it has something in it called allicin. It comes from onions too. Onions have allicin, but it's a it's a extract, and they found that it's really good for boosting immunity. That's the last. You're done with your notes. We're done. That's it. Half an hour. That's Look all, at that. That's all we got, folks. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so I just thought that today. It was a good day to talk about building your immune system because, you know, when it comes down to everything that's going on, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, let's, let's look beyond what's going on right now with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Let's look beyond that. You know, immune system is still important. It's not just right now. It's not just top of the mind stuff that's going on right now. Building the immune system forevermore is important. Right, right. It's very important right now. Very important right now, but very important for the rest of your life. I mean, if you're going to live to be 100 years old, Andrea, I just already said the number one killer of, of, of people over the age of 65 mm -hmm. is infection. And, it, and, and just did, that didn't just happen last year. It didn't just all of a sudden become the number one killer of people over the age of 65 last year. Right. Mm -hmm. It's come on for a period of time. 
Right well, on. Thank, thank you for being on the call again, Doc. Thanks for putting up with all my craziness because I'm not at yeah. home. I had with a your cat, cat here. Your cat and whoever was walking around in the background right, there. Right, right. So yeah, yeah. And your your video going in and out. Yep. My so. cord not getting plugged in right. <laughs> there you go. Well, Andrea, oh, I appreciate you being here here every Tuesday. You know, and and we, we you know, there's just so many things we can talk about. I mean, we've been doing this every week now, 52 weeks a year. We maybe skip one or two weeks a year because of holidays or whatever. But basically we're 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 on here 50, 50 weeks a year. And we've always got something to talk about. There's always new information to share with people. And what I love, you know, about this call, Andrea, is it forces me to go out and do some research. Right. And it forces we me keep to you sharp, Doc. Yeah, because then now I I learn new things that I can share with all of you because I don't want to just go back and repeat what I I mean, if I repeated what I said four years ago. Then I might as well just play the recording and say, hey, I don't have to make any more new calls. We we said it right. all. We said well, everything. New, new research coming out all the time. You're always doing research. You know, people always, can always tune in stuff. every Tuesday and listen to the to the, listen to us live. You bring the science, I bring the comedy. The comedy. <laughs> the comedy relief. All right. Andrea, have fun at you on your vacation at the lake over there. And uh, we'll see you next week. Folks, thanks okay. for being with us. Comment, comment often, and share these videos. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye.